Hi, this is Phil Shapiro. I've been reading a very interesting book, just came out, How to Think Like a Coder Without Even Trying by Jim Christian. So who is Jim Christian? Uh, he's a web developer, IT consultant, and co-founder of Firetech Camp Australia, a technology camp teaching kids how to make awesome things with technology and build 21st century skills. He lives in London. So, uh, this book is published by Batsford Books, which is an imprint of Pavilion Books. And here is their Twitter account. So, uh, this is from the back cover of the book. So you want to start thinking like a coder? You already do. You don't need to have a computing experience to know how to code. That's kind of interesting proposition. Computers are all around us from traffic lights to cash machines. It just takes a little common sense to work out what makes them tick. Puzzles and exercises suitable for all ages will help you think logically, work within constraints, constraints and deconstruct problems. This fun guide turns everyday situations into opportunities to code. So this is interesting. This is a book about coding, but there is no actual computer coding that takes place in the book. It's a book about coding. So I'll spend just a minute or two explaining who I think this book could benefit. So this book could benefit um, adults who are interested in, in who are, who don't have a technical background as computer programmers, but who would like to become uh, knowledgeable in the terminology and ideas involved in coding. So you might be, um, this might be appropriate for our grandparents who have a, a grandchild who is interested in coding. And then the grandparents might be working as a lawyer or some, some non-technical field, and they just want to share some of the excitement and terminology. And so reading this book could kind of get them up to speed with some of the concepts and words. Uh, this might also be suitable for a school principal, school superintendent, or a public librarian who wants to uh, develop a facility in talking about some of these things in coding because that's such a big deal these days. So I volunteer with a group called Girls Who Code and some of the some of the volunteers there, I'm a volunteer supporter rather than an instructor, but some of the instructors um, themselves are not um, computer programmers. They're there for so just kind of moral support and guidance. And so this kind of book would be helpful for them or um, somebody who is a supporter of a Coder Dojo. Coder Dojo is this worldwide computer club movement started in Ireland. So if you're a supporter of your local Coder Dojo, this book might be helpful for you to read if you don't have a technical background. I found it an interesting book to read. It's about 140 pages, not very long, and some cute illustrations. And let's take us through this book a bit. So here's the table of contents. Um, I like the history section. There were some things about history that I found really interesting, all the way back to Lady Ada, Ada Lovelace, and Charles Babbage. Uh, here's some more of the table of contents. And it has a very nice glossary, the book. Um, Here's, I think, from the introduction here. One thing that unifies all the past, current, and hopefully future coding languages is a set of core concepts. You will find that these core concepts have their roots in computer science, logic, and mathematics. Um, and this book aims to show you how to think like a coder without having to touch a line of actual code. So uh, that might be overpromising a bit, um, but uh, I still found the book an interesting book. Interesting book. Uh, here's what I, one thing I liked in the book. You hardly ever see this anywhere else. Here's a chart that tells you the difference between a kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, and petabyte. Um, and it shows the equivalence. Uh, and that's pretty interesting. So uh, a lot of people who are non-technical uh, might not be familiar with these. Uh, they've heard the words, but they really not don't know the difference between a gigabyte and a terabyte, etc. Uh, the illustrations in the books are cute. I like, here's just an example of the illustration. And this uh, particular quote in the book really struck with me. 
Uh, if, you, if you're really stuck about thinking a reason why you should learn to code, have a think about a game or an app that you like and consider how you might change it to make it better. So I got into computer programming back in the 1980s when I saw different software programs on Apple II computers that I said, you know, I'd like to change that and make it better or uh, I'd like to make a variation of this game or whatever. Or um, So, and that was so exciting where sometimes you can make just small little change and it has a dramatically interesting different effect. Change one line of code, it can sometimes make a huge difference uh, in how something works. Um, here's a sample page of the book. It explains about the IDE integrate, integrated development environment. Um, this is the software tool you will use when you write your own code. Modern IDEs include syntax highlighting, which guides you as you write your code. So, um, uh, so this book is intended not this book is not intended for children to be reading. This is a book for adults or college students or whatever. Um, some some high school students would would enjoy the book, but it's a book uh, about coding, uh, not teaching coding, but about coding. Uh, this is at the end of the book. There's a nice. Um, um, Nice reference material at the very end. Uh, I, I really liked uh, the reference to uh, Al Swigert's Guide to Practical Programming. So he's well-known and cherished person in the computer field. Uh, lives over in San Francisco area, as I recall. And he has this thing, Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. Um, and there's a website, automatetheboringstuff.com. And then, of course, MIT Scratch. And then this book itself has its own website, coder.jimchristian.net. And I went over there to take a peek. Um, it's an interesting website. Here's an example from the glossary. So the glossary is nicely done. And um, uh, I found the glossary interesting. So that is my review of this book. Um, I like the book. Um, it is a, it came to me as a hardcover, uh, which is always nice. I love hardcovers. I like paperbacks. Any book I love. But anyway, um, if you found this book interesting, you can find my other book reviews collected together at sites like google.com slash site Phil Shapiro book reviews. And I made the screencast that you're looking right here. I use a Linux laptop. Uh, and I, it's a ThinkPad and I'm recording my audio with a digital audio recorder, my Olympus, and Logitech is my webcam over here. And I try to use as much free software as I can so that other people could be doing the same thing. I have my laptop hooked up to a ViewSonic monitor. It's a monitor 2560 by 1440 pixels. That's a lot of pixels. It gives me a lot of resolution. That means that this book review looks really nice if you have like um, uh, a monitor with a lot of pixels on it, you can watch this in high definition and things ought to look fairly clear. And the audio should be sounding pretty clear. Uh, here's how you can contact me, pshapiro at his.com, Phil Shapiro, I have a YouTube channel. And uh, you can support my video book reviews, uh, you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have a Patreon website, and you can make a monthly uh, small contribution if you so choose. And this is what my Patreon looks like. I love Patreon.com. It's a way of supporting creative people. I support a bunch of people myself. So, until next time, this is Phil Shapiro.